All right, it's time for another math easy solution here and discuss further to limits and look at a proof of uh, basically the limit of a composite function theorem using the precise definition of a limit. Basically, this theorem states if f is continuous at b and we're given basically the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals to b, then basically the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x, which is a composite basically a function inside a function, then just equals to f of b, or if you rewrite it, basically limit as x approaches a of f of g of x, which is inside, equals to f, and then this is the limit of x approaches a of g of x. And this is inside here. So basically it, it's stating that the limit of a composite function is basically uh, that composite function, but then with the limit inside it right there. So that's all it is, you can move it uh, back and forth, doesn't matter, these are both exactly the same thing. Now in the proof, I will uh, use basically uh, the precise definition of a theorem. I'll recap it soon, but uh, you can also see that in the video link below on, on what it is. And also what a continuous function is, it's important to know. So you should watch my video on continuity in the video link below. Now before I get to the proof, I just want to quickly recap on a precise definition of a limit. Basically it states limit as x approaches a of fx equals to l if for every number epsilon which is greater than zero, so doesn't matter what it is, there's, there's a number delta which is greater than zero which is dependent on whatever this is, and you always have this case where the difference between fx minus l, the absolute value of it, is less than this, uh, this epsilon whenever you have zeros less than this x minus a and less than this delta right here. So I'm not gonna go over this too much, but you can see in the video link below on precise definition of a limit, just to make sure you get your head around it, because it's once you get it, all the proofs for these uh, limits becomes pretty straightforward. So now when uh, getting the proof of this, basically let's just write down this function of return to prove limit as x is a of f, f of g of x equals to f of b. I just put the b in there instead of the limit as uh, g of x as x approaches a of g of x, let's put that there to make it easier to write. Basically now to prove it, we need to find basically a uh, delta, so find a number delta which is greater than zero such that, well, the uh, basically the precise definition applies. Or, or basically such as uh, this one right here, f of g of x, so uh, absolute value, the difference between this and then this is f of b. It's exactly the same thing in the, uh, what I'm writing from the uh, this precise definition. So now it has to be less than this delta whenever. So we got to find this number here. So for because this one we're given, this is anything greater than zero. So now this is whenever. Let's write it down. Yeah, whenever zero is less than this absolute value of x minus a, and it's less than this delta. And then basically we have to find out what this is. Now above, uh, above it was given that f is continuous at b, and now if it's continuous at b, then this means the limit exists here, basically, you see my video on continuity, All, that's basically what it means, thus the precise definition applies, and if we have, let's say, let's let y equals to g of x right here, then if we have something like limit as x approaches, well, Actually, not x, y. So we'll write as limit as y approaches, let's say, b of f of f of y. This has to equal to f of b right here because it's continuous. This is the definition of a continuity. And since we're given it's continuous, it just means that the limit exists and it and is basically you just directly substitute whatever this is inside here. So we need to have this case. So we write this down. And then if, if the limit exists and the precise definition also applies, then there has to be, oh, we'll just write there exists a number. Now we're gonna have a new delta, exists a number, uh, say delta one, which is greater than zero, such that you're gonna have now, if you apply the precise definition, f of y, which is minus f of b right here, because that's the new limit of this one. S be less than, and well, in this case, this is gonna be the exact same uh, epsilon that we're looking for because remember this f of y, y is just g of x, we just let it equal to that so this is just g of x and and then when we scroll up here this is yeah this is just f of g of x instead of f of y so this is the same thing so that's that's this one right here and now in this case we have whenever well this is going to be a new one so whenever y minus or zero is less than absolute value of y minus b is less than this delta one right here. So now this is this case. So this has to exist. So we have this which exists right here. And now this part right here, yeah, this part uh, we could also use it in the next part of this proof where, because we are given, well as right now since we are also given that 
limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to b. So if this if this limit exists, because we're given this one, then again the precise definition has to apply, and there exists now we'll, we'll call there exists another delta. Yeah, exist a delta. In this case, it's going to be the exact same delta as before because it's going to be an x minus a delta greater than zero, which is the same one we're trying to find out. So this one, this exists, but for this case, and now we're going to have right here such that, let's put these uh, colon right there. This is gonna, now, now going to be g of x minus b, and this is going to be less than, well, delta one actually, not, not epsilon, because this one is y minus b. Remember, this is just... Uh, this is just g of x, and this is just y. So now this is going to be the difference right here. It has to be less than delta 1 whenever now in this case, so whenever x minus a. So 0 is less than x minus a. We have the same delta because we have this x minus a here, less than delta right here. So now if we just look backwards, we've just proved it. We've just proved that uh, basically the composite uh, function theorem for limits. So basically, because we know that this exists, so we, we check mark this, what we're trying to find, this exists. Now this implies, yeah, so if this exists, then we have this case, and now if we go backwards, this this exists, and now this one right here also is, is applicable, f of i minus f b, which is less than this epsilon, and this one is exactly what we're trying to prove. That's this one right here. So we've, we've proven this exists. So this, uh, I'll just write it down, this exists, and we've basically proven it. And now, yeah, this exists, and we have this, this one uh, applies as well, so we've basically proven it. And thus, since we put all together, since this delta exists, such that this difference of f of g of x minus f of b is less than uh, this epsilon whenever 0 is less than x minus a less than this delta, thus the limit, we've just proven it, limit as x approaches a of f of g of x, equals to well f of b or where b is uh, b is basically equal to well f of limit as x approaches a of g of x so this is our proof i'll just write down proof and do a, just a little check mark so basically we've proven here and yeah this uh, that's all for today hope you learned from this video so make sure you uh, watch videos on precise definition of a limit and also some examples i've done earlier on them because it's once you get your head around this, all this uh, proof, which may seem abstract, is pretty straightforward. And that's uh, that's all for today. And remember, you can also watch the continuity video in the video link below. That's pretty important. Well, that's all for today. And yeah, remember to download these notes in the Dropbox link below if you want. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.